बिसमीम हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रहमान डिजिटल प्रोडक्शन दिस इज़ लेक्चर नंबर वन हंड्रेड एंड सेकेंड ऑफ फिज़िक्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू टॉपिक इन दैट इज़ विद द नेम स्टेटिक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन दिस रिगार्ड वी आर फर्स्ट explaining the electrostatic phenomena when a plastic comb is charged it remains charged until it is touched by something else we say that the comb has stationary electricity or static electricity uh in this unit we will discuss static electricity in terms of positive and negative charges we will also study the properties of static electricity dear learners the first topic of this chapter is electrostatic phenomena some objects such as glass rod or an ebonite rod acquires a new property of being able to attract small pieces of paper after they have been rubbed with another material such as silk or fur this phenomena belongs to the branch of physics called electrostatics or static electricity it involves the study of static electric charges before rubbing these objects do not attract small pieces of paper this implies that frictions due to rubbing has changed the nature of the surfaces of the rod we say that friction has caused the rod to be electrified or charged dear learner friction produces two different kinds of charges on different material it is usually quite difficult to perform electrostatic experiment in singapore do you know why dear learners because singapore is mostly a country with great humidity so when there is a humidity in the air it works as the conductor of electricity and when you charge electrostatically something those charges are going to the earth through that humid air so that is why it is difficult in singapore specially to perform uh, electrostatic experiment uh under which conditions would these experiment have a greater chance of being successful when there is less humidity in the air then we are having greater chances of being successful in the electrostatic experiment keep these things in mind let us understand this electrostatic concept with the help a few experiments dear learner these experiment are extremely important so please pay full attention in each experiment there is an information to you people and you have to understand that if you are not understanding these concept then you won't be able to understand these subsequent topics so take your time on these experiment and then uh, understand the subsequent questions or topics uh, easily okay let us talk about the experiment number 1 you can see that there is a silk thread and small pith ball and there is uncharged glass rod when it is brought nearer to the pith ball 
the pith ball remains in its rest position when the uncharged glass rod is brought near to it it is neither repelling nor attracting that pith ball so what is the inference what is the cause of this the gravitational force of attraction between the pith ball and the uncharged glass rod is too weak to cause any movement in the pith ball dear learner remember that there is gravitational force between every object of our world if there is a chair and there is a table there is a gravitational uh, force between those two objects but that is uh, uh, very small and we cannot uh, feel it and similar case is here there is the gravitational force between the pith ball and the uncharged glass rod but it is so small or too weak to cause any movement in the pith ball remember when there is no charge there will be no attraction between the two object this is the nutshell of this experiment keep in mind now let's turn our focus to experiment number 2 in which uh in the same arrangements as in experiment number 1 glass rod rub with silk cloth when the glass rod is rubbed with the silk cloth it is being charged and when it is brought nearer to the pith ball then the pith ball is attracted towards the glass rod uh now you have to observe the angle theta 1 so for experiment 2 the pith ball is seen to move towards the glass rod after the rod has been rubbed with the silk cloth now what is uh, the meaning of this statement both the glass and ebonite rods are able to attract light object after they are rubbed with the silk and fur respectively that is they are electrified or charged now in experiment 3 if we are bringing instead of ebonite uh, instead of glass rod we use ebonite rod rub with the fur not with the silk cloth remember that silk cloth is working with the glass rod and fur is working with the ebonite rod keep this in mind the question might be that there is a glass rod there is an ebonite rod and there is a silk cloth and there is a uh, fur take these four items and charge the glass and ebonite rod so you don't have to rub the uh, silk cloth with the ebonite rod it will not charge it why we will discuss that in the subsequent topic so keep this in mind that there is angle 2 and angle 1 angle theta 1 is in the case of glass rod rubbed with the silk theta 2 is the angle when the ebonite rod rubbed with the fur and remember the angle of displacement theta 1 and theta 2 of the pith ball are generally large what does it mean it means that if the angle is large the attraction between the pith ball and each rod is fairly large that is the electrostatic force is much stronger than the gravitational force between the pith ball and the rod so uh, we 
got the information from these three experiment uncharged rod does not produce any sort of movement in the pith ball and in the second and third experiment when we charge the glass rod or ebonite rod either with the silk cloth or with the fur they are charged and they will attract what the pith balls towards it so far so good let's turn to experiment number 4 and experiment number 4 you can see that there is a charged ebonite rod and charged glass rod both are being charged respectively with rubbing it with silk cloth and the fur when both the rods are brought nearer to the pith ball it will attract that pith ball towards itself but the angle of displacement of the pith ball theta 3 is smaller than theta 1 or theta 2 yes if you see theta uh 1 and theta 2 the, those are greater as compared to the theta 3 what does it mean it means the electrified states of the glass and ebonite rods tends to weaken each other yes these rods they are charged but they will weaken each other and as a result the force of attraction between the pith ball and these two ebonite rods are weak in other words there exists two electrified or charged states so when you are bringing two different materials one is ebonite rod and glass rod in this case they will weaken the effect of charging of each other and as a result there will be a very small force of attraction between the pith ball and these two rods okay now let us turn our focus to experiment number 5 and we are gonna change the setting in the experiment in other experiments there was a pith ball hanging with the silk thread in this case we are having two same glass rods and one is uh, hanging with the silk cloth and the second glass rod is in our hand and we are moving it nearer to the hanging glass rod the two charged glass rods are seen to repel each other note repulsion also occur between two charged ebonite rod as well so we will see that effect in experiment number 6 you can see instead of the glass rods we are having two ebonite rods and when they are applied to each other they will repel each other here also we are having the same charges as it was the case in the glass rods uh in this case also the two charge rods are seen to attract each other the glass rod and ebonite rod have different or unlike charge one is the glass rod hanging with the uh help of silk thread and the second one is the charge ebonite rod in experiment number 6 they are different from each other so 
they if they are the same they will repel each other but if the two material are of different charges then they will repel each other so in this case glass rod and ebonite rod are two different material having two different types of charges on it so as a result they are attracting each other you can see that from arrows that they are attracted towards each other the glass rod and ebonite rod have different or unlike charges now dear learners let us elaborate all these things in the form of different observations and these observations are of extreme importance in the field of electricity and magnetism now there are two type of electricity with us one is called electrostatic which is the study of charges at rest one is called current electricity or you can say dynamic electricity and that is due to the moving charges we will discuss that as well current electricity but in first case we are studying the charges at rest uh we learned in the previous classes that when charges are in motion they produces current we are not talking about the current in this chapter if there is a static charge we can charge it how we are charging in the next topic in tomorrow's lecture you will learn that how we can charge the uh, stationary charges now based on the results of the experiment we did in the above table we can conclude that number 1 friction produces two different kinds of charges on different materials such as glass and ebonite this is the first observation this is the first observation the second observation is like charges always repel each other and you saw that in the form of two glass rods they were of similar material having similar charges when we rub that with the silk cloth they will produce the similar charges so from that we can conclude that similar charges are repel each other the third very important observation is unlike charges always attract each other as we saw in experiment number 6 that when a glass rod and ebonite rod both are of two different materials are charged electrostatically and we brought them nearer to each other they will attract each other so this third observation is from that part unlike charges always attract each other the fourth observation is only two kinds of charges exist that is positive charge and negative charge we will name these charges so far we are generally saying only two kinds of charges exist and that is the reality as well i am giving it the name as positive charge and the negative charge now proton uh, are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged but we will discuss that in tomorrow's lecture and we will perform an experiment uh, of charging by fraction so stay tuned don't go anywhere 
otherwise you will miss if you haven't subscribed my channel please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you will be informed and you will be the first person to, to see my video when i upload it thank you very much for your time allah hafiz